The small village of Bronbog has recently come under a baneful curse. The young are born deformed and demonic. The denizens are driven to madness, some suicide. Those that remain, stubborn as they are, have fallen silent. But the nature of this curse has drawn the attention of one man. I am Calder the Witch Hunter, the 800-year-old immortal. Now, Calder, you've seen such curses before drive whole communities to ruin. But from what your experience as a witch hunter has taught you is that the usual purpose of such a curse is not just to spread pain and suffering, but to prepare the land with enough misery and darkness for some ulterior motive, to transform the fane of the land into a site ripe for dark ritual. So, you, in seeking the source of this curse, have gathered up a handful of proven warriors from the land to investigate what is actually going down in Bronbog. I'm Vexalia, the stealthy half-elven ranger, separated from my twin brother and on the hunt. I am Grog, a Goliath barbarian with love for combat, women, and ale. I am the headmistress, a human monk whose family was killed during a civil war and who's now out seeking vengeance. I'm DuPont DuPont, dwarven rogue, and if there's coin to be had, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> So, as the five of you trudge up to the outskirts of the Dream Seat Marchlands, the sun slowly begins to set, and the mildewed, awful, set water smell of the swamp begins to take over your senses. As darkness slowly descends upon the landscape, you can see a bit of light poking through the trees as you slowly become aware you've reached the outskirts of Bronbog proper. You see tons of huts and small villages all darkened, left desolate. You hear the cricketing sound of various insects in the swamp begin to slowly swell, the frogs calling out into the darkness. Uh, you approach what looks to be the only true sign of life in your vicinity, this small hovel, kind of mildewed on the outside, with one single window that is aglow against the darkness. Can we peek in the window? You step up to the side of the window and you peek in the corner. You can see in the interior, it's, it's almost a hoarder's home. There are a series of crates and barrels and papers just scattered about like this place has been packaged and then unpacked multiple times. Someone's been trying to decide to leave or stay. You see in the, uh, the light, seems to be a female form, humanoid, uh, sitting over a desk in the corner, currently kind of toying and sobbing to herself silently. She seems distraught. We should probably knock. Hmm. And we're all gonna get distraught. Okay, let's <laughs> hey, this is what, she's, a, she's a hoarder. What? She's gonna put us in a <laughs> box, label us? Tons of D20s just lying about. It smells really good around here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, knock. Who's going? Who's knocking? Leader. Am I knocking? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> if you'd like that, to. <laughs> or, 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 did this turn into Calder the Knocker? <laughs> <laughs> um, Every journey begins with a single knock. <laughs> well, I can't be surprised. So, I guess I'm. Shouldn't we scan? Shouldn't we like perception the house or something yeah. first? Maybe. Okay. I feel like we're walking into. Go ahead and roll a perception check. <laughs> yeah, I will. And my perception bonus is plus six. Yes. I think that's a fourteen. I like a fourteen. Yeah, I think it's right. a little bit of a fail roll, but. As you approach the door, uh, you can see the door itself is uh, not as mildewed as the rest of the building. There is uh, a general appearance to this that the rest of the house, while old and weathered, this door is much fresher than you would expect. That's the best you can ascertain of that nature. It does catch your eye. Well, at least she cleans the door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is everybody all hesitant? Oh, no, God. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me show you how we do this. And I go up and I pound on the door real hard. <laughs> the sound echoes through the interior and you hear a voice go, ah! on the other side. Uh, a couple of sounds of footsteps kind of pitter up at the side and the door slowly opens with a creak. <clears throat> you can see now a young woman, kind of in her early to mid 20s, uh, her face streaked with tears and dirt. Very simple clothing, kind of looks through, peering at the group. I'm sorry. Is there a problem? What's going on? Uh, I don't do well with emotions. Um, I'm really the group knocker. Somebody, <laughs> else, somebody else want to take you from here. Are you upset, dear? What's What's been happening here? Well, it's best you not be here. Death awaits those who come. Hmm. What are you doing? Flee? 
Flee, this is my cause. I chose to live here. Let me take this onus. You still have a chance to get away. Onus? We don't run. Get away from what? <laughs> Curse. We pillage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with him. We pillage. <laughs> um. So she's saying she's running away from her. We should run away from the curse. That's what she She seems very not honestly distraught and is reaching out to it in hopes of trying to instill you with the same fear. But maybe she knows more. Do you, have you done research? Why are you here when everybody else has fled? <sighs> because my family's always been here. And it's not much, but it's still home. And if we all leave, there's no chance anyone will come and save us. This whole land will fall to ruin. At the very least, if I die here, Maybe, maybe that'll be enough of a reason for someone to come and alleviate this, this terrible, terrible night, saying. Who, who's responsible for the curse? We don't know for sure. We hear voices in the night, in the far ends of this swamp. We hear laughing and terrible, terrible gurgling in the swamp. Voices of languages we don't know. We've had a few folks go out to try and stop this. They never came back. Recently, I've heard Terrible, wistful howling of voices, moan, moaning in the morning mists. Do we know which direction the swamps are from this? You're currently about a good, uh, say, an hour's worth of travel into the swamp to meet meet this. So you're you're in the heart right. of it right now. It goes further out towards the uh, the distant mountain range, and you gather from what you have traveled, it just gets more and more uh, desolate, more murky. The water level seems to sink even further. I mean, it's laughing, gurgling, moaning. If we're sure it's not a bar, <laughs> might not be what so can, bad. What can we get out of this? I could collect some change of the fugitive state. I, I mean, I've only got a bit of gold to my name as well, but we'd be happy to put it up if you'll be of help. Please, I ask. Oh, a bit is much better than none. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and you greedy. <laughs> I'll go ahead and speak to the denizens around. I will, if you come back. I mean, alive that is, we'll have all of our money ready for you. Yes, please. I think we should get half up front. <laughs> <laughs> you drive a hard bargain. What well, do you have I on mean, you? Yeah. Go and roll a persuasion check. Okay. Ooh, 11. Be persuasive. Be persuasive. Plus one. Twelve. 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 <laughs> okay. I'll offer you what I have. And she stumbles off and starts thumbing through all these boxes, making this loud, clattering noise. Oh, Comes back about it. five minutes later and goes, yeah. 120 gold. It's all I've got to my name, but Damn. if this yeah. if this means to you that that we have your service to aid us, please. This bravery is a welcome change around here. If you like, I can take you to these ruins outside the village yes. where this seems to. Okay. I grab the gold purse <laughs> and I say, go ahead and show us the way as all right. I put it in my backpack. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, this way, and she walks out past you, kind of closing the door behind her, locking it with a key, um, turns around, follow me into the marsh. And she steps out into the night air, deeper into the swamp. Yeah, we follow. <laughs> and we're on foot, no mounts. Uh, and no mounts to get here. Uh, you figure the swamp is kind of hard to traverse with uh, beasts of burden. Sure. So as you step into the swamp, about an hour's worth of kind of tense travel continues. You can hear the occasional uh, call of an owl into the night air. Um, the swamp itself grows more and more sticky, and you're finding yourself with each sloshing step, finding more and more tension and drag against the back of your feet. A slow fog begins to roll in as the night truly takes hold of the Dream Seed Marshlands. Uh, I would like you all to roll a perception check. Oh, Jesus, really? <laughs> oh, really? Mine's so bad. I've got one. 13 plus six. <laughs> you go blind. 13 plus six. 13 plus six, 19. 20. <laughs> okay, and what'd you get? What was I percep- Oh, perception. I- Oh, eight. <laughs> eight. Eight? Three. Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, as the woman and part of your party begins to travel forth, uh, Grog Six, okay. called her. Plus three. There you go. Oh no, perception is plus zero for me. It is? I'm not a wise man. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> you can't even see your hand in front yeah. of your face. I mean, I've, Thank I've God got I've got some wisdom here. Yeah. <laughs> After 800 years, you learn a thing or two. Exactly. <laughs> so pressing forward, part of your party begins to step forward. Grog and Calder, both of you guys stop for a second. Your senses kicking in. The fog that's rolling in, while <laughs> swelling naturally, is beginning to coalesce and gather into shapes. You see slowly piercing beyond the veil of the mist. You can see arms appear and then vanish. Occasionally a face kind of chuckles and <laughs> disappears back into the surrounding vapor. You notice 
just beyond Vex, it begins to coalesce behind her in the form of some sort of humanoid, wraith-like entity that begins to reach out for her. I'm trying to pull my foot out of this muck. I can't even see what's going on right now. How far am I? Uh, she's probably 20 feet ahead of you. So I should attack. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so seeing this. Specter, wraith, something's gotta die. There you go. So you, rushing forward, seeing this entity, you burst forward with speed, going and sloshing through the mud. As it reaches out to claw, you run forward, arcing your sword down whoosh, in a large strike against the creature. Go ahead and roll attack. 13. 13. 13 is actually what you need to hit. It's armor class. So go ahead and roll damage on that. Cool. So that's a total of five damage. I uh, spin around. What the what? What are you attacking? <laughs> I'm attacking the wraith that's behind you. The Oh. At which point you see coming up between the two of you. This goes to the entity. So, uh, Grog, yeah. you're prepared for this. You pull your axe out in preparation. I want everyone to go ahead and roll initiative. Amazing. Yeah. That's been terrifying seeing so a witch hunter sprint I towards know, you with a with sword. With a full sword. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Calder is up first. And then coming up the rear end, they have DuPont. Someone has to do it. May as well be me. <laughs> All right, so, so as. As the, you can see a second wraith beginning to form behind you and kind of in the center of the group, Ouch. you're up first. So Calder, what do you want to do with your next round of combat? Um, let me light up the sword. You use your quick action. Yeah. You bring the blade back and as you kind of concentrate on it, closing your eyes to draw on the mystical power from your training, <laughs> reddish yellow flames begin to burst up the outside of this metallic blade. In the light that kind of lights up the exterior of the swamp, the wraith immediately recoils with this look of fear. What else are you going to do now? I like that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to... Attack! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get two attacks with your sword. Go ahead and roll twice. Yeah, nice. yeah. Same plus a nice. One. That'll hit. Go ahead and roll the first attack damage with an extra d6 because the fire. Baller. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, all right, so that comes to a total of four damage plus the four from the sword. So it's eight against the entity. So as you streak down with your first attack, whoosh, the flames send the actual creature separating for a moment. The vaporous mist kind of uh, bisected in the middle of the air. It slowly reforms as you, using that action, recoil for a second strike downward. Go ahead and roll your next attack. 17. 17, all right. Go ahead and roll damage for the second strike. Oh, there oh, we go. That's oh, that's beautiful. God. <laughs> Just obliterated. Smack. <laughs> what is that, 20? It's 20. Yeah. <laughs> okay, with the second attack, you swipe down, this time the orange shale of flame burning a white vibrant white. With the intent, as your uh, your witch hunter brings the blade down, whoosh, the wraith screams out in pain <laughs> as it dissipates into the swamp air, completely destroyed. Vexing, <sighs> looking dumbfounded by it. Cal, Caldo, thank you. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Then. <laughs> However, at that same moment, you hear the <laughs> creeping sound of the second wraith that seemed to draw up behind you now. Uh, next up in combat, that would be. Where's our friend right now? Uh, she's uh, currently back with Grog at this moment, kind of hiding behind the large <laughs> Goliath barbarian. Okay. So what do you want to do, headmistress? Extra attack, I guess. Okay. So as you're darting up, your monk fists out, you can see the uh, the focus of your key energy causes the exterior of your flesh to seem to momentarily harden like iron. Hell yeah. You rush up to with with unnatural speed. Uh -huh. uh, the wraith not even realizing your presence. Go ahead and roll three attacks. Okay. So plus seven each of these strikes. Eleven. That hits. Roll two more times. Punched a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> two. Nine. That is going to miss, unfortunately. Third attack. Ah. Ah. Twelve. That hits. All right, so roll damage twice. So it's a d6 plus four each strike. <gasps> two. So, so it's six. One more time. <laughs> Five. Nice, all right, nine damage. So as you rush up, you poof, punch the, the wraith from one side. You can see its form shimmer from the impact. You go out for a secondary uppercut and it seems to disperse around your fist, completely missing in the air. Uh -huh. You rear back for a kick. This time it's unprepared for the secondary attack and you whack, smack it upside. For a moment you feel as if the ghost has a physical form around your fist and it takes the impact, kind of drifting back about five feet. <laughs> that concludes your turn. Vex, you're up. I think Grog was next. He had a 17. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I had 15. I'll take the great axe and I swing it. And I go for um, uh, a frenzied strike. So I get an additional attack. Okay, so leaving the one behind you, currently fearing for, for her life, you go into an angry rage, froth forming at the corner of your mouth, and you charge up against the wep the, the wraith, currently flanking it from the side with the headmistress. Stay here, right. Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. That's a 24. That'll hit. Yeah. Uh, next attack. That's a nine. Whoosh, whiff, go ahead and third attack now. 
That's uh, 14. 14 does hit, so go ahead and roll yes. damage twice. Yes. Thank you. Uh, D12. That's uh, nine. Nine. Oh, dang. Uh, 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 12. Already. That's twice. You, got okay. you missed the one. So as you swing up, you swing the axe wide. Uh, it cleaves through part of it. You can see there's now a burst of kind of blue ectoplasmic energy just kind of just dissipates from the immediate blast of the attack. You swing back with a backhand. It dodges out of the way. So it's going for your throat. As you do, you bring the axe, backhanding it to the side. The actual wraith is pushed off of its axis. It looks very angry and now intent on you. Um, it is now actually the wraith's turn. Oh, um, twist. Twist. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Why? Directed by M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> hey, look at that. Um, it turns to you and reaches out its face, contorting with these large, angry ghost of fangs. Uh, that's ooh, that's going to be a 21 to hit. That'll hit. Okay, and second strike as well. That's going to be a 14 to hit. No, you may. Alrighty. So as the wraith reaches out, it claws the front of your chest. But the claws seem to seep actually into your chest cavity, They're going up to the wrist, and you feel this cold, sudden grip on your heart as if it stopped beating for a moment. <gasps> you take 21 points of necrotic damage, oh. and your hit points are permanently lowered by 21 points. <laughs> what? Oh my god! Great That's kind of harsh. Yeah. <laughs> Wraiths are harsh, yo! That's yeah. major! Harsh DM alert, harsh <laughs> DM alert. <laughs> You're gonna stroll into my danger. You gotta learn to live. Dang! Total party kill incoming. <laughs> <laughs> a third wraith begins to drift out of the oh, mist behind God. Grog. What? Now it's your turn. Best. Yeah! You I see what call. it's doing, and I hunters mark that wraith. Okay, so as you concentrate on it, you can see your 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 experience hunting ghosts clarify its vision. Go ahead and make your attack. Help All right. me. <laughs> <laughs> Go no! I'm so excited. Oh geez, that sucks. Uh, Twelve. <laughs> Twelve just misses. Okay, wait, 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 I'm gonna do it again. That's better. That's 18. 18 does hit. Go that's, ahead and wait, no, that's, that's 20. 20. 20. Oh, wow, wow, All right. Wow, wow, wow. So the second arrow actually finds purchase inside the ghost steel entity, currently keeping its form semi coalesced to attack Grog last round. Uh, 10 plus Hunter's Mark. Uh, that's, what is that? Is that a five? 15. That, that's a five, yeah. 15 points of damage. As it goes back to try and reach into Grog a second time, your second arrow finds it, and you see the face kind of burst around as the arrow just barely misses the side of your head, disappearing into the distant swamp. Oh, the second wraith is destroyed. Yes! Uh, the, the third wraith, however, is still kind of coming up from the behind of Grog. Why uh, me? That's gonna be because you're big and scary. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I've seen some really impressive things so far, so I'm going to not try and shortchange this. I'm going to sprint with all my might, try and backflip over Grog in the Wraith, then stab it in the back. With <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. The, the, the Dwarven Rogue all of a sudden lowers his head, and Ninja runs across the surface of the marshlands, almost like his body has no weight momentarily. Leap off the air, make an acrobatics check. Uh, oh, 29. 29. <laughs> with a deft silent landing, Behind the wraith, you pull your daggers out, going for the dual attack. Go ahead and roll. All right. This is epic. So that is uh, 18. 18 hits. Go and roll the second attack. Nice. And that is a 17. Both hit. Go ahead and roll damage it and sneak not attack have damage on the first attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I need 46. Oh, here's the d6. Yeah. Here's a d6. Five. That's a d4. That's oh, nine. Oh, the daggers. Right, gotcha. So nine damage on the daggers, and then that is and the then smallest. Nine. Nine. I know it's so tiny. So pretty though. Plus seven. seven, so 16 plus nine, 25 damage. 25 damage, yeah. nice! Thank you. So as the newly formed Wraith kind of sneaks up behind Grog, you flip over it, <laughs> unnoticed in the, in the shadow, you being your stealthy rogue yourself, you plot both blades, slam them both into the center of this this kind of mystical center of the, uh, the Wraith. You see a flash of blue ghostly energy and it screams out <laughs> from the pain, disperses, your daggers all of a sudden no longer having any sort of physical purchase in the creature and reforms around, turning and looking towards you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Surprise! So that's your turn. Come to the top of the round. Calder, you're up next. How far am I from the dwarf? Uh, you're probably, a, I'd say, this uh, 25 feet. Would it be worth uh, a mystic blast? Certainly, if you want to. <gasps> what? Go for it. Oh. Oh. Critical! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Critical, guys. Critical. All right, all right. Get out. <laughs> Doesn't matter what decade you're in, guys. <laughs> a critical is a critical. <laughs> and it's a mystic blast. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so go, go ahead and roll damage and multiply it by two. Wow, okay. So, I just can I just enjoy this critical for a second? Yeah, dude, take it in. Criticals, guys. <laughs> okay, so roll 11. Again, so you could roll twice. And then 
Okay, so that's that's eight. So it's ten damage plus your uh, bonus. That's plus three. Plus three. All right. So as the entity is reaching up, uh, now facing Dupont. You turn around for a second, glance, and there's a burst of kind of purplish energy from your eyes as you pull on your mystic background. As you pull your arm back, you can see a bit of arcane flame gather in your palm, and you release it outward. It goes streaking through the night air, lighting up the forest as it surrounds, slamming into the wraith-like entity, and you hear it finally scream out in the air, <laughs> as it is dispersed and destroyed from the blast of mystic energy. You're sitting there. The front of your face is a little singed what? from the nearby impact from the arcane energy, Apologies. but you're left unscathed. <laughs> now that was a close shave. <laughs> Doug is actually an improvement. <laughs> thank, thank you. You're welcome. There's a ghost behind you. <laughs> <laughs> it calms down from it. The adrenaline still pumping for your system. You take a few breaths before you realize the mist is recoiling and the swamp before you seems to be unveiled, showing the rest of your path. Well, it was worth the 120 gold, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> glad we collected yeah. it. I'm glad we got it. He only, only lost half his life force. Right, right. Oh. The woman walks up to you and says, <laughs> that, that power you hold, that's strange and ancient. What are you? It's a good question. I'm a witch hunter. <laughs> <laughs> we all gasp. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of steps back with awe. Oh, then we want to stay with you for the remainder of this journey. <laughs> oh crap! She's coming with us. <laughs> oh, she's coming. With, okay, cool. All right, we'll protect you. I'll do more gold. Oh yeah. She walks alongside you, and you guys step further into the marsh. Now the actual liquid of the swamp is of up to your knee and thigh almost. Each step in itself is arduous, until eventually you see a form in front of you what looks to be a large stone archway of some sort of ruined castle or establishment that has long toppled over and fallen into the swamp. Uh, as you look forward, I want you all to make a, a perception check. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, that looks so good. Finally paid off. 13. 16. Plus 6, 19. Nine. Oh. I suck. 16. 20. Wow. <laughs> Barbarian being so perceptive. I'm just, I'm really. <laughs> Never happens. That's great. I just keep looking at the purple coming from your eyes and I get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Calder, DuPont, and Grog, as you guys approach, you see in the center of this ruin, elevated beyond the rest of the swamp water, there appears to be a large stone platform, a table much like this, um, that seems to have on top of it a series of small. Uh, Trinkets and and bone shards. It appears to have something of some sort of sacrificial nature to it. There is relatively fresh blood, meaning <laughs> probably over the past two or three days. You can go ahead and make an investigation check to truly ascertain the nature of how long it's been there. And plus four. Okay, so what's the total on that? Eleven. Eleven. It's hard to really get the nature of how long it's been there. You gather it's been probably a few days. You can't tell if it's human or not. Um, but regardless, as you approach the table, the moonlight seems to slowly wither, and the room goes very, very dark around you, uh, to the point where it's pitch dark. I don't like it. I go into a rage. <laughs> <laughs> All red? Yeah. I don't like the dark. Should I, should I light a torch? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's a good good idea. Idea. yeah. So as you're all here lost in the darkness, all of a sudden Dupont, <laughs> you light the torch. It bursts, but it seems like the darkness is constricting it. You're still getting light, but it's very low. Well, that's not good. Like the night Do air is trying to strangle Can we hear it. anything around us? Is there any anybody's voices? Or? As you take a moment to take this in, the silence hits and you hear this, oh, this whispering beginning to surround you, uh, directionless. It has no real source, but it is enough to grow louder and louder to instill a lot of you with fear. Um, uh, can I grab our tag along and yell at her, where have you taken us? As you look for her, you do not see her around <gasps> you. The darkness is too it's constrained too at this point. Uh, you hear a voice come out from the darkness upon the other side of the uh, ritual table you're standing at. We're all gonna die. How eager they are to walk on, unknowing they come to seats of their destiny. Another voice comes from behind. It's the voice of the young woman following you. An offering of outside Oh, I knew it! I knew it! It cleans the palate, the tastes to come. Shall we begin the next offering, dear sister? <gasps> yes, yes, we shall. And the woman steps out of the darkness, her head turned to the side, and you see her form shimmer. And behind it, you see her flesh extend as her arms grow overly long, her form large and hunched, this disgusting looking swamp hat like vision. As she looks forward and cackles, a second one of the same type physical presence steps on the opposite side of the ritual table surrounding you. Ah, Winchanter, 
It seems you've come to your final bout. What do you want to do? Ooh, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, attack! <laughs> As your sword now still feeling the flame behind you, you trail, you rush towards the first tag immediately before you. Go ahead and make a round of attacks. So 17? 17 hits, it's roll a hit. second attack. Yeah, it does. Oh! oh! Critical! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guys, I don't make this up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm gonna roll a couple of 20s. Oh. All right, go ahead. It's roll. all 20s. Go ahead and roll damage for the first attack. Four. Seven. So 12 points of damage as the first strike streaks across the front of the hag entity. She pulls back the flames <laughs> erupting from the wound in her chest. You can see black, brackish blood just beginning to flow from the wound. She looks at you right in her face, her crooked nose and evil, deep sucking yellow eyes. Uh, it'll take more than that, cold. Roll damage for the second strike. For the critical? Yeah. Ooh. There we go. So double that, both dice. Yeah, so that would be <laughs> 26 plus. Three. Plus three. So 29 points of damage. How do you want to do this? This is your, fin <laughs> your finishing blow on this one, Hag. Describe how you want to do this death blow. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this death blow is just so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Can I throw a little spin in it? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, go ahead and describe it. How do you want the death blow to be? Oh, guys, stand back. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to get really... I literally... I have to throw a spin on it because that's what Calder would do. Yeah. And so I go, my first one is a beautiful swipe. And as I spin, I reposition my sword and lunge deep into the heart. Yeah. The first strike, uh, the second strike now cuts through the front of the torso. You can see the ribcage exposed as her upper body is having a whole time keeping its physical form. Strange spirits begin to streak out of her chest, screaming. <laughs> she reels back. <laughs> Calder. <laughs> Reaching forward on the blade as you're, you're brought the hilt up into the first one you set, you can feel that kind of cold crimson spill over the front of your hand. Beautiful. As her face is in yours, you can see the eyes twitching as life begins to leave her form. There are more. They will find you. Silence! <laughs> as you push in, her breath escapes the throat. Her eyes fall back and the body falls limp against your grasp. You draw the blade up, flicking blood off, some of it onto the headmistress and Grog. <laughs> <behind her. laughs> apologies, apologies. The other hag, who had just revealed, turns and goes, Another time then. <laughs> <laughs> backs out, seemingly very frightened by the fact that you just instantaneously disabled her sister. Yeah, run. Disappears in the What's darkness. That? The moonlight creeps in again as the shadow that seemed to have consumed the vicinity seems to fade. You're now left amongst these cold ruins the tension and curse seemingly now vanishing. The light and liveliness of the local fauna and greenery slowly returning around you. Well, we have done some good. And we got good paid thing you up got front. The money up and we front. got some money. You always ask for it up front, guys. Always ask for it up front. I never liked the old woman, I'm just saying. I know, I knew what we were walking. Oh, well. As your merry band of mercenaries head back towards the uh, city of Bronbog, you are greeted by the remainder of the partially insane, but very, very grateful <laughs> uh, survivors of this recent curse. Uh, they managed to come out to you. The rest of the money they had collected amounts to about 320 gold pieces, as well as a handful of currently unidentified magical artifacts that you currently mm. keep at your uh, your side for future mm. identification. Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> <laughs> that's for you guys to decide. <laughs> as you step out of the bog with a sense of accomplishment, the five of you look on to consider one, where your next venture will be, and two, where this other hag may be wandering off to possibly set another trap and gain vengeance for the death of her sister. And that, my friends, concludes our adventure for today. Yeah! <laughs> As Calder and his band of mercenaries left the small, saved, cleansed village of Bronbog, they went out into the night air. What adventures did this world hold in store?